Welcome to Library Storytime. Our first story today is Goldie Socks and the Three Librarians. <laughs> oh, it's librarians. It's not librarians. It's librarians. Oh, my. I wonder if Miss Kim can remember to read that right. One morning, a little girl named Goldie Socks was on her way to school. Goldie Socks usually walked along the road, but this day, since she was running particularly late, she decided to take a shortcut through the forest. Mm. She's got awfully big feet. Did you notice? No. Look at those big shoes. Yeah. <laughs> by and by, Goldie Socks came up on an astonishing sight. There, in the middle of the forest, she saw a cottage that appeared to be made of books. That's awesome. Yeah. I think it's a library. It might be. Goldie Socks loved books more than bears love honey, so she went up to the house for a closer look. She knocked on the door, and to her surprise, it creaked open. Cautiously, Goldie Socks peeked inside. Shelves and shelves of wondrous books lined the walls. She called out to see if anyone was home, but no one answered. Goldie Socks knew she shouldn't go in, but the temptation of all those books was more than she could bear. Look at all those books everywhere. Look here, Evan. The ceiling is made of a book. The shelves are made of books. That is weird. Bunches and bunches of books. Watch what happens. Once inside the cottage, Goldie Socks went straight to the shelves and began browsing through the books. The first book she pulled off the shelf was too big. In fact, it was so heavy, it fell on the floor. Goldie Socks went to another shelf, but the book she took from the shelf was too little. Then she looked through some nonfiction books and found one that was just right. You got it. <laughs> Madeline knew where we were going. Goldie Socks wandered over to another shelf and opened up a chapter book. She used the five finger rule to see if the book was too hard. She started with a closed fist, and when she came to a word she couldn't read, she put up one finger. All five fingers went up while reading the first page of the book, so she knew that the book was too hard for her. She tried another book, but it was too easy. Then she found a book of fairy tales that was just right. Just right. Good job. After she found several books that were just right for her, Goldie Socks began searching for the perfect place to read them. Mm. Goldie Socks looked around the room and spotted a big, lazy bear recliner. She climbed up in the enormous chair and pushed back, but it went back too far. Look, you can see her pigtails. <laughs> <laughs> and her feet went up in the air. And look, her books went everywhere, too. Oh, my. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny, all right. She surveyed the room again, and this time she spied a poofy couch with lots of pillows. Goldie Socks sprang into the air and landed smack dab in the middle of the couch. Pillows flew everywhere. The couch was too squishy. Maybe there is a comfy place upstairs, she thought. No. What do you think she'll find upstairs? <laughs> More books and a tent. When Goldie Socks reached the top of the stairs, she saw a tent made out of a blanket. She crawled inside the cozy tent, opened the book of fairy tales, and began reading. Yes, this hey, look. place. Hey, look. The stairs are made of books. They are. There's <laughs> books everywhere in this house. 
has weird, really weird. This place was just, just right. right. Good. Around noon, the three librarians came home for lunch. Uh oh. Oh my. Uh oh. Gonna, I don't know what's gonna happen there. <laughs> Ooh, look at Papa Librarian. Librarian. <laughs> He's mad. Mm -hmm. Papa Librarian immediately noticed one of his books on the floor. Somebody's been looking at my big books and left one on the floor. Then Mama Librarian said, Somebody's been looking at my little books and put one back on the shelf with the pages showing instead of the spine. See how they put the book, they put, turn the book around backwards on the shelf. I'm not supposed to do that. Then Baby Librarian said, Somebody's been looking at my nonfiction books and one is gone. Okay. <laughs> Look at his eyes. <laughs> One's gone. <laughs> <clears throat> Papa Librarian looked at another shelf and said, Somebody's been looking at my hard books and left one on top of the shelf. <laughs> Somebody's been looking at my easy books and put one back on the shelf upside down, said Mama Bear. Then Baby Librarian said, Somebody's been looking at my fairy tale books and one is gone. His eyes are great big again. Look at his eyes. What is going on? <laughs> they don't know, but we do, they, don't we? And they're really mad. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Papa Librarian saw that his favorite chair was not in the same position that he had left it. Somebody's been sitting in my recliner and left it pushed back, he said. <laughs> And then Mama Librarian said, somebody's been on my poofy couch and knocked all the pillows on the floor. Yeah, yeah. Didn't even pick them up. Hmm. That, was not that is a messy, messy person, whoever it is. It, 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 yeah. Oh, look. The three librarians crept up the stairs. When they got to the top, baby librarian said, Somebody's been in my cozy reading tent, and there she is! Goldie Socks looked up from the book and saw the big, sharp teeth of the three librarians. What's going to happen? Oh, smiling at her! <laughs> Smiling at her. Why? Why do you think? <laughs> because they're happy she likes books too. Papa, Mama, and Baby Librarian joined Goldie Socks in the tent. Papa Librarian read a story to everyone, and it was just, just right. right. <laughs> Yay, good. I like that story. It's a really cool it, story. Is it time for her to Yes, it's time for Miss <laughs> Lisa to read a story. Okay, this is called Woodpecker Wants a Waffle. What? Do birds eat waffles? No. Do, do waffles. you eat waffles? No. I love waffles. <laughs> oh, look. Look. Looks like he's pecked a hole right through that waffle. Well, they... Well, woodpeckers don't have that freaky hair. Do they have in the back? Yeah, well, some do. There's a pileated woodpecker that has that big old flume of feathers <laughs> right above his head. Anyway, it says, One morning, Benny awoke to the best tummy rumbling smell. See this? That's the aroma, the smell coming from somewhere. And so off he flew to investigate says, grand opening of Moe's, home of the uh, waffle breakfast. That's weird. Hot waffle breakfast, hot waffle breakfast, yeah. That's really weird. <laughs> W-A-F-F-L-E, he read. What in the world is a waffle? He doesn't even know what a waffle is. <laughs> it's a kind of pancake. <laughs> the waffles smelled good and they looked good. The waffles must taste good too, thought Benny. Look, he's at the window looking in. I want waffles. 
Benny declared. Yeah. So Benny politely pecked at the front door. Tap, tap, tap. Tap, tap, tap. But instead of waffles, he got the boot. Oh, bam. Look at him. Oh, she kicked him out. Aww. Poor Benny. <laughs> Poor Benny. <laughs> Next, he tried to sneak in. Do you see him sneaking in? Yeah. Look at her dress. It has birds on it, and there's Benny. <laughs> Is this going to work? <laughs> no. <laughs> but instead of waffles, <clears throat> Benny got swept away. Flap. Look, now he's upside down. <laughs> Poor Benny. Yeah. Benny tried a number of creative disguises. Look, he's a health inspector. Some kind of a monster. He's selling fruit. He's trying to be a baby. And he's trying to be a milk. <laughs> and he's trying to be a milk jug. <laughs> but instead of waffles, he was tossed in the trash. Whoosh! Yes. Poor Benny. Is he ever going to get to try a waffle? No. Nope. What are you doing, asked Bunny. I am wishing for waffles, said Benny. <laughs> Look at his friends. Yeah, the animals started laughing at him. This is ridiculous, said Bunny. The bunny knows that he's not supposed to want waffles, right? No. <laughs> and one by one, all of the animals chimed in. Look at all these animals talking to him. Raccoons don't eat ravioli. Lizards don't eat lasagna. Owls don't eat oatmeal. Moose don't eat muffins. Frogs don't eat fries, like french fries. <laughs> Hawks don't eat hot dogs. Skunks don't eat scones. Turtles don't eat turnovers. Coyotes don't eat cupcakes. Snakes don't eat snow cones. <laughs> <laughs> Bears don't eat bagels. Chipmunks don't eat cheeseburgers. And woodpeckers don't eat waffles. No. No, look at that bunny. You're not supposed to eat waffles, Benny. <laughs> well, why not, Benny asked. Why not, the animals grumbled and chirped, croaked and whispered. Then they thought and they thought and they thought and they thought. Look at them all thinking. Can he eat a waffle if he wants to? No. No? <laughs> because I said so, said Bunny. I really don't have time for this said so nonsense, Benny said impatiently. I think he's going to do it anyway, isn't he? Is he going to get a waffle? Yeah. No. So Benny got right to work devising a plan to get some waffles. No. First, I will shoot out of a cannon. Whoom. And then he hit the jo uh, ground juggling. And no. then and then he did the moonwalk. No. See, look at him walk backwards. And he did break dancing. And he followed up by a comedy act. Look, he's trying to be silly. Is this going to get him a waffle? No. Let's follow the arrow. And then he did a Broadway style finale. With fireworks, yeah. Is that going to get him a waffle? No. <laughs> the animals were speechless, though Benny was sure he heard some snickering. I'll see you all tomorrow, and don't be late. <laughs> the next morning, the animals gathered in the field by the diner to catch Benny's big show. No one was late. No one, except for Benny. <gasps> Where's the woodpecker? He's late. Look, all the animals are watching. Look, he's even got a, a spyglass to look. <laughs> Where is Benny? You think? As the animals waited patiently for Benny to arrive, the waitress in the diner noticed something odd. The customers noticed something strange, too. You guys noticing anything strange? I don't see anything. Those animals are staring at them. They're all staring, that's for sure. Wow. Everyone at the diner stepped outside to look at the animals. Look, and the one guy's even filming it with his phone. 
All the animals had come to look at the diner. And he walked in there. <laughs> that's right. And that's when Benny made his move. See the little footprints? There he goes. <laughs> Sweet, said Benny. Mm. Looks like he's got waffles with regular maple syrup and butter on it. Yeah. Yum! <laughs> that was a very fun story, wasn't mm -hmm. it? Written by Steve Breen. Okay, so we have got a waffle activity for you. I have got some waffles here with lots of different syrups. Some of these syrups are fake syrups. They don't really exist. Or but, false syrups. Yeah, and so they're going to help us match our colors, okay? Yeah. So I'm going to give each of you three jugs of syrup. Take those. Okay. And you get three jugs of syrup. You get three jugs of syrup. Okay. And I get one. Okay. So look at your jugs of syrup and look at the, look at the center hole and that's the color of the syrup that's inside the jar. I got one. Okay. Got so one. let's do the first one. Who has the orange? I don't know if I've ever tasted orange syrup, but that might taste delicious. Okay, can you walk it up here and put it right next to the waffle? It will stick right up there next to it. So we're going to match our colors. Oh, no. Okay, there we go. Okay, so that is orange and orange, so we matched it. Yay. Have we ever had any lime syrup? No. <laughs> I don't know what that would taste like on a waffle. And he's match got that lime. one. All right. All right, so then we have just the plain old maple syrup. Who's got one that doesn't have any color in it at all? I think I don't have one. Let's see. Andy, I think you might have this one. Do you have just the plain old maple syrup? Yeah, there we go. All right. Oh, one of my favorite things is chocolate. Who's got, oh, Andy had the chocolate one too. All right, so there's our chocolate syrup. Perfect. Okay, yep, you're gonna get your chance here in just a minute. All right, anybody have grape? I have. Grape syrup? You have grape, come on and put it right up there next to that one. That's a purple, huh? Purple would be grape flavored. Okay, what about bubble gum flavored, the pink? I, I, I have pink. Okay, come match the pink. Would you like a bubble gum flavored syrup? Yeah. Well, I don't want that. I mean, sometimes you go to the dentist, you get the bubble gum flavored in your mouth, you know, when they clean your teeth. But on, as a syrup, I don't know. Would you like that? No. I don't know about that either. Okay. What about blueberry? I got blueberry. Oh, you do have blueberry. Okay. Well, it looks like Madeline and I are going to finish this up. Okay. Can you, let's, up beside it. Let's go put it up here. Can you stick there it right there? Go. Yeah, so it matches. Okay. Um, I have two left. Okay. The really dark one. I, I, I have one. Licorice flavored syrup. I, do you have it? That's like a black. All right. Come put licorice up here. See? Okay. Would you want a licorice flavored syrup? I don't like that. Yeah, I don't like that much right I agree. Okay. <laughs> well, hang on a minute. I've got this one. This is strawberry syrup. That's pretty normal. Some people put strawberries on their pancakes and waffles, right? That one's pretty normal. But I love waffles. what about a lemon syrup? I, I have one. Okay. I can you want to cut? Can you match that one? Okay. So good job. Perfect. We have matched our syrups and our waffles. Now, can you all tell me all the colors that we see? What was this color? Orange. And green. green. This one really doesn't have a color because it's just sort of clear, right? It's maple yeah. syrup. This is chocolate. Or chocolate. What color is chocolate? Brown. 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 Okay. And the grape syrup is uh, purple. purple. And the strawberry syrup? Is red. Red, good job. <laughs> and the lemon syrup? Is yellow. Yellow. The licorice syrup? Is it's a, like a darkish black. Black, yep, yep. And the blueberry syrup? Yes. Blue, right? Blue. And the bubble gum? Yeah, purple. That's not purple, it's pink. pink. Pink, so you guys know your colors. Good, Good job. job. Yeah. All right, wow. Miss Kim's got one more story okay. for us today. I think waffles is one of my favorite breakfasts. Mm -hmm. I love waffles. Yum. Well, we've talked about breakfast food. How about a story called Good Night Tiger? Good Night Tiger. Good Night Tiger. I don't have that. Let's see. I don't have that book. This mm -hmm. is an interesting little story. You gotta really watch what's going on so you can understand what's happening. Okay. There she is. Good night, tiger, she says. Good 
It was the middle of the night, but Emma couldn't sleep because of all the bellowing and stomping and trumpeting and growling. Mm. Can you make any of those sounds? Can you, can you growl? It's a tiger. <laughs> Might be. <laughs> the animals must have escaped from the zoo, she cried. But there was no one on the street except the next door neighbor's cat. Emma looked under the bed, on top of the wardrobe, and through all her toys and clothes until at last she saw that the noises were coming from... Her animals in her wallpaper. The gorilla bellowed, and the hippo stomped, and the elephant trumpeted, and the tiger growled until Emma shouted, Go to sleep! We've tried and tried, but we can't, said the tiger. Well, maybe I can help you, said Emma. And she grabbed a chair and climbed up into the wallpaper. Can you do that? No. 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 <laughs> so this story is make-believe, isn't it? We're just going to pretend. Have you taken your bath yet, asked Emma. No. I think I skipped a page, boys and girls. Let me see here. No, no, we didn't. No, said the tiger. Well, no wonder. You can't sleep, said Emma. Hmm. Got to have a bath before you go to sleep. But there wasn't a bathtub anywhere in the jungle. We could always use the watering hole, said the tiger. So the hippo scrubbed behind his ears. The elephant used his trunk to give himself a shower. And the gorilla shampooed his fur until it was soft and shiny. But when the tiger jumped in, he landed on the crocodiles. What a ruckus! Snap! <laughs> a bath like that won't help you get to sleep, said Emma. How about some hot chocolate? Yes, please, said the tiger. But there was no hot chocolate anywhere in the jungle. Oh, we could always use mud, said the tiger. Would you like hot chocolate made with mud? No. <laughs> so the gorilla mixed it very carefully, and the elephant used his trunk to pour into two little cups. It smelled horrible. But when Emma and the tiger took a drink, it actually tasted completely disgusting. A drink like that won't help you get to sleep, said Emma. Well, what else can I do? Emma tried everything. She gave them a bear to cuddle. But the bear didn't want to be bothered, so he ran away. Hmm. She started to sing them a lullaby, but all the animals in the jungle joined in, and it became too loud. Well, nobody can go to sleep with all that loud noise, can no. they? No. <laughs> she even tried to turn the lights off, but she couldn't find a switch anywhere. And we're still not tired, said the animals. I don't know what to do, cried Emma at last. You can't sleep, and that means I can't sleep, and I'm exhausted. Is there anything else we can try, asked the tiger. And then Emma had a wonderful idea. We can read a beautiful story, she said. Yes, please, said the animals. We've never heard a bedtime story. Mm hmm. Oh, look at them now. Look, Emma has the book out, and look what all the animals are doing. Watch close, see what happens. Hey, Dad, it's about the tiger, and we're reading a tiger story right now. <laughs> That's true. <Very> good. <laughs> good observation. 
So Emma told them a story about some animals who escaped from the zoo. The little girl who found them and the great big adventure they had before they all went to bed. <laughs> when she was finished, remember we got to sit still on our pillows? When she was finished, the gorilla, the hippo, and the elephant were fast asleep. Emma yawned. Oh, I'm still wide awake, she said. Hmm. But she's yawning, isn't she? Yeah. See the animal sleeping? Oh. How about a good night cuddle, said the tiger. Yes, please, said Emma. Good night, Emma. Good night, tiger. Good night, tiger. Good night, Emma. The next morning when Emma woke up, the animals were smiling at her from the wallpaper. Ex everyone except the tiger. <coughs> Emma found him curled up on the bed and he was still fast asleep. <laughs> the tiger went to sleep real good, didn't he? And there's the tiger stripes on the last page. Yeah, pretty good. Tiger finally went to sleep and so did Emma. That was a good story. Yeah. Nice yeah. bedtime story. Where was Max? Well, we're really all finished. So the last thing we have to do is tell everybody goodbye. Are you ready? Yeah. Stand up with us. And let's wave goodbye to everybody. Turn around and wave. Turn around and wave. Say bye. See us bye again. Bye.